Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn of the word of truth as given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. You know what I mean? What we talked about last week? Let me see. All right, look at my note. What we've been talking about for the last couple weeks? Hebrew, the milk of the word. The milk of the word, right? What we start off with then? That should repentance be easy. Repentance from dead work, faith toward God. That's repentance from dead work, faith toward God. What was the next thing we talked about? Baptism. Male. Baptism. Now after that, what we talk about? Laying on of hands. Laying on of hands. That means we're going to talk about what today? Uh, death and eternal judgment. Well, eternal right. judgment and... Now you uh, had it right. Uh, well, no, you did not write technically. Resurrection. Resurrection and eternal judgment. And eternal judgment, right? So let's go to uh, Hebrews chapter what? Five. That's Five. Six, six, six. Yeah, let's just, let's just skip to six. It's Hebrews chapter six, verse one. Watch what the book say. That's right. You like them tacos? Mm -hmm. Did you like them tacos? Yeah. You better yeah, believe me. They were amazing. Yeah, you know. This isn't my light work. You know what I'm talking about? Like, it's just a Friday. That's all. You know what I'm talking about? It's just a Friday. It's just a Friday dish. You know what I mean? Tell him. I'm about to have a Mexican beat. <laughs> a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Just give me a little bit more time to right. figure out with, their recipe. With, with, with your taco packets. Yeah. Okay. Shh, 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 shh. <laughs> Camera's on. Shh, shh, shh. <laughs> How you know they ain't using taco packets? Nah, they ain't using that. What I tell you, that ain't no taco packets. Nah, you don't know. Maybe some of them, but you know what I'm saying? It ain't just taco packets, though. All right. Hebrews 1. Hebrews chapter 6. Tell them, baby, is it just taco packets what I do? It's a whole science. That ain't, that ain't all packets. You would know. Oh, that would make chili all chili packets. You know what I'm saying? Not a seasoning now bone in his body. Now the chili be all chili packets. Chili be having seasoning Please. Please. Chili packets. Okay. Anybody could do that. Whatever, Terrence, because we're not savages. We don't have to scrounge up our herbs and seasonings. Whatever. <laughs> Pack it. It's Hebrews chapter 6. Ain't nobody make better taco than me. Mm -hmm. Not chicken taco. Mm -hmm. Are you sure uh, what verse 1? I need red. Well, I need so red. <laughs> 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 I mean, Granny makes me beef taco. Beef tacos, y'all got me beef. It's Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. Let's see what the book says. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of the Messiah, let us go on to perfection, not laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works and mm -hmm. faith towards God, mm -hmm. of the doctrine of baptism and the laying on of hands, mm -hmm. and of resurrection of the dead. And, and of what? Resurrection of the dead. And what else? And eternal judgment. Uh-oh. And of resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. So we talked about repenting from dead works and faith, for, tw faith towards God. We talked about uh, uh, baptism. We talked about laying on the pants. So today we want to try to get to re the resurrection and eternal judgment. Right? These are basic. What you have to understand, what we're talking about right now is basic stuff. This is the stuff. I mean, it's the beginning. This is, if you ain't starting here, it's like, oh, man, I don't even know what you're talking about. Right? It's the basic. It's the easy stuff. Y'all be quiet. It's the easy stuff. Right? So the problem is, if we hear people and they get these easy things, what the book is calling the foundation, the beginning, if they get the beginning wrong, guess what? They are unskilled in the word of truth. That's book. Right? So when was the last time y'all walked into a church and you heard them talking about the resurrection? Other than on Easter. You know what I'm On Easter, they hit you with some resurrection now. Other than on Easter, when you heard them talking about the resurrection? When was the last time somebody died, a Christian church member died, and they said, you know what? 
They're going to be resurrected in the end. How they comfort they self? In heaven. He looking down on us right now. You know what? He with God right now. Ain't that what they say? He with God. You know what? But you know, God just took him home. Man, ain't that what they say? Yeah. That's how they comfort they self. Ain't that what that, that's what that is? Comfort, right? It's like, yeah. I'm sad. Let me comfort you by telling you that he's looking on us from above or he, God called him home or whatever they use, right? That's comfort. That brings you comfort. Is that how the word tells us to comfort ourselves? Nope. How the word tells us to comfort ourselves? Thessalonians. Late what is it? First Thessalonians what? I forget. Maybe First Thessalonians five. chapter 4, verse 16? Four. Might be 17. Four or five. It's four. I'm going with four. Right. I want to say First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 or 17. I want to say 17. I think I said 17 first. So let's go with 17. Might be 15. No, really. It's First Thessalonians chapter 4. Give me verse 17. It's important. A lot of people, man, we look at this book, a lot of people don't even understand that we in error. Because it's like, what could be wrong with comforting somebody telling them that he's looking on us from above? Everybody know when you die, you go to heaven. Everybody go to heaven, you let the Christian tell it. I'm going to tell you, I just know. I mean, I saw him right before he shot that gun. And then <laughs> they shot him back. He did a little glance up to God. And that guy saved him right in that moment, right before they shot him back. What about the people that he shot? <laughs> yeah. Did they save them too? I didn't see where their eyes went. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I didn't see where they eyes They eyes were straight. You know what I'm talking about? But when it's your friend or your family member or your loved one and all that, guess what? I mean, I just saw a little glimmer in this darn eye. Lord saved them that day. That's going to be killing me. I'll be looking like, man, y'all y'all don't know what y'all darn talking about. Y'all mocking God right now, man. Y'all don't know what y'all doing. Y'all think somebody just, that's it? That's all it takes, huh? Just a little glimmer in your eye, a little, a little shift. Somebody say something, well, praise God before they go do a crime or do go sin. And all of a sudden, you know what I'm saying, like they saved? Okay. For sure. It's how the book say comfort yourself. You know what I'm saying? This is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse what? 13. Oh, it's 13. Goodness gracious. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. Well, what you wanted is 17. That's fairly close. No, 14, if that were, I mean, 13 is where it starts, then that's where it starts. All right. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. Watch what the book say. But I would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. Ah, uh, he said, I wouldn't have you ignorant, brethren, concerning those which are asleep. Watch this. That you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. He said, when they say asleep, they're talking about the dead people. He said, look, I wouldn't have you, listen, you're not going to be ignorant. You shouldn't sorrow. In other words, don't be sad. Why, Paul? That you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Uh-huh. For if we believe that Yahshua died and rose again. Because if, if, conditional, if we believe that Yahshua died and then rose again, that's a resurrection. Even Watch this. so, them also which sleep in Yahshua, God will bring with him. Another condition, those that sleep in Yahushua, not just anybody now, the ones that sleep in Yahushua, how do you know you're sleeping in Yahushua? By abiding in him. You died keeping the faith, mm -hmm. right? Therefore, you're not dead, you're asleep. Because when you sleep, what's going to happen eventually? You're going to wake up. You're going to wake up. You know what that's called? Resurrection. Resurrection. Watch it. Keep going. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, uh -huh. that we which are we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. What's going to happen? For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, uh -oh. with the voice of the archangel, uh -oh. and with the trump of God, and the dead in the Messiah shall rise first. So the ones that's dead in the Messiah, in other words, sleep in the Messiah. You see, he called it both ways, so it ain't no confusion. You sleep in the Messiah, dead in the Messiah. What's going to happen? We shall rise first. So they get up first. Then what happened to all the people that's alive? Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thank you, Paul. I appreciate this information. What should I do with it? And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Uh-huh. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So now let me ask you a question. If Paul, this is Bible, is it Old Testament or New Testament we're talking about? No. Okay, so it's not done away. 
You know what I'm talking about? Ain't no, ain't no speculation about it being done away with. If the New Testament, Paul, good Christian Paul, is telling you comfort one another with the fact that if you die, conditional, if you die or sleep in the Messiah, right, one day there's going to be a trumpet when the Messiah comes from the sky, and we're going to be called with him. But who's going first? The ones that were dead in the Messiah. Then after that, the ones that are alive. And we're going to be called to him. You know what? Comfort yourself with that information. Because we're not the other people. We're not like them who have no hope. That's why you can't talk to me about somebody looking at me from down. The, uh, that don't comfort me. That ain't, that ain't none of my teaching. The doctor never told me to comfort nobody like that. That don't make no sense. Man told me, listen, what would be better if it was true that your granddaddy was upstairs, way up there just looking down on you? If that was true, what would be better? Granddaddy looking down on me in the clouds or resurrection? If it was true. Resurrection. No, if it was true. That he was looking down, resurrection, you sleep, you dead. Right? It's more comforting for me if it were true. It's more comforting for me that granddaddy watching me. Like, nah, man, don't do that. Give me a little message. You know, then you can look out for me. You watch, you see stuff I don't see. If it were true, trust me, Paul would tell you, no, nah, comfort him that way. That's more comforting. It's like a movie. But guess what? You know why Paul didn't say it? Because it ain't true. It ain't true. I know it feels good. I know a lot of people tell themselves that, but we got to break ourselves from being comforted with lies. We can't take it just because it's something make you feel good. If that's what we go with. That's how we got here. We taking stuff that make us feel good, but it's not true. All right. A Christian pastor, you know what they would say right there, right? You know that Paul, they would say, oh, no, nobody want to get real in here. You know what I'm saying? You know they say that. They say, oh, don't nobody want to get real in here. Let's just keep going. Them boy, I'd be like, man, y'all some good boy. That thing, that thing used to get me too. I'd be like, oh, pastor, preachers. Good good pastor. Pastor, preaching day. You know what I'm talking about? Ain't darn said nothing about the book. Say some good wise stuff, though. Just ain't nothing about the book. Um, let's go to First Peter chapter two. Let's see what the book says. Because at some point, we got to get some of the sincere milk of the word. You know what I'm talking about? It's First Peter chapter two. Give me verse one. First Peter chapter two, verse one. Then we go into John chapter five. Baby girl, you drawing? You drawing a picture of daddy? No. You gonna draw a picture of your dad? Hmm? Daddy, this will be yours. What you drawing? Look. You drawing me? Yeah. Yeah, make me look good. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Um, when I was at my aunt's house when we were in California, we did this thing called communion. And I had no idea what we were doing. All right, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about it. We might, we might get to it tonight. See if we, uh... This is your head, right? We'll see if, uh... <laughs> We'll see if, uh, you know what I'm saying, see if we can go over it so you can get comfortable with it. A lot, a lot of this stuff that these people do, they don't know what they're doing either, but it's all right. We'll, we'll make sure you understand the facts based off of what the books say. This is, uh, this is uh, what I say, First Peter or Second Peter? First Peter. This is First, First Peter chapter 2, give me verse 1. Wherefore, laying aside all malice. He said, laying aside, aside all malice and all guile. And hypocrisies uh -huh. and envies mm -hmm. and all evil speakings. So that's repenting from dead works. Watch this. As newborn babies, desire the sincere, sincere milk of the word. That's what we that talk about. That grow thereby. That's the basics. You know what I'm saying? When we talk about the sincere milk of the word, we talk about repenting from dead work and faith towards God. Baptism, laying on the hands, which covers praying, and we also talking about eternal judgment and resurrection, right? Those are the items. These are the things that people, almost any of them subjects, if you put them in front of these teachers of these mega churches, they will not be able to unpack it. They will not be able to accurately speak to it. I mean, they're going to get caught up at resurrection. I mean, at uh, uh, repent from dead works. They're going to tell you, oh, yeah, no, well, see, repentance is something that you just have to really deep, deep down be regretful to God. 
Then they're going to turn around and tell you, you know what? Ain't no need to regret something that you did. Because you know what? Without that, you God couldn't have brought you where you're. You mean to tell me God needed sin to bring me where I am? Okay, that make a whole lot of sense. That make a whole lot of sense. Because the whole book I read, he thought he had to, he had to jump through a hoop to try to save me from sin. You know what I'm talking about? Because I sinned, he had to go and finagle it and do this. And like, oh, man, I got to do this. Okay. So I got to put my own spirit inside of this. Oh, goodness gracious. He had to, he had to pull, break all types of loopholes and do all types of stuff to make this thing happen because I sinned. That's the way I see it. But now you telling me, the man, the man looked at David and told you, I would have did all these things for you. Right? I gave you this, gave you that, and I would have done even more, but you sin. However, I'm supposed to believe that it was but for the sin. You know what I'm saying? If not for the sin, I wouldn't be where I am in a positive way. Man, I'm about to kill Moses. Overnight, listen. <laughs> all, Mo look, all Moses did, it didn't circumcise his boys. You bloody man, his wife called him. Wife had to do it. Moses, like me, I'm telling you, when they circumcised my boy, I'm like, man, I, ain't, I can't see that stuff. My wife had to go and change his diaper. You know what I'm talking about? She was like, you bloody, that's what she was thinking. She was, you bloody man. You know what I'm talking about? Because I ain't got time for that stuff. But Mo, Mo was like, man, I ain't doing that mess. He just kept walking. Mo was like, God said, no, nah, I ain't doing that. You know what I'm saying? Keep going. You know what I'm saying? His wife had to do that thing for him. Mo was about to get killed, but for his wife. However, you let a Christian tell it. Let me tell you. Moses, if not for that, wouldn't have been able to bring the people out, out and through the Red Sea. You just got somebody else to do it. You, you, are you not, like, do you not understand how the book work? Ain't no telling what Most High God would have did if he would have, if he would have, you know what I'm saying, circumcised his son. Maybe it would have been something totally different. Maybe he didn't go through all the hardship that he went through. You never know what the Most High God working and doing. But we make up these lies just to comfort ourselves with lies. All right, this is uh, John chapter 5 real quick. It's John chapter 5. We've got a lot to cover, so I'm going to try to move through. It's John chapter 5, verse 19. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You're not supposed to be making noise. Then answered Yahshua and said unto them, Uh huh. Verily, verily, I say unto you, uh -huh. the Son can do nothing of himself, uh huh. But what he sees the Father do, uh huh. For what things soever he does, these also does the Son likewise. That's right. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that himself does. Okay. And he will show him greater works than these that Ooh. you may marvel. So listen to what he's saying now. He's saying everything the Father do, that's what the Son do. He's a big statement. A lot of people just look at it and be like, oh, look at this. this is, Jesus is so beautiful. You know what I'm saying? They just look at this stuff. No, no, no. The man trying to tell you, you got to put yourself in the situation now. This is just a man walking around doing a lot of hocus pocus, and we don't know who this man is for sure. Man just pop out and they're like, listen, let me tell you something. Everything God do, I do. Yeah, y'all yeah. know the father, right? I can't do nothing without him, in fact. You know what I'm saying? It's cool if you say I can't do nothing without God. Be like, amen, brother, amen. Then the man say, in fact. Everything he do, I do. <laughs> and I do everything he do. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, oh, the father do it. I mean, the son got to do it too. <laughs> and I'm the son. You know what I'm talking about? That's how he's looking at these people talking to him. It's like, God created the earth in seven days. I do it too. I had to do it. Light work. Light work. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like where weekend because of me. Days, See what I'm saying? Seven days you rested. I you wouldn't have no weekend if it wasn't me. You know what I'm saying? What you talking about? That's a bad boy talking. You know what I'm saying? You look at this man and you got, I mean, I just be trying to put myself there. I be looking at this man like, what in the world? Boy, I'll come knock you out talking this madness. But the man is right. Watch him. For as the father raises up the dead and Listen to what him, he's saying. What, what we have to do is we got to get our mind out of just saying, oh, that's Jesus. Right? That's secondary. We're going to do that. We're going to praise him. We're going to do that. But the first way we have to take this is, this just a man doing some hocus darn pocus, 
You know what I'm saying? A lot of people say that he doing miracles. I ain't necessarily seen it with my own eyes yet. But everybody say, so a lot of people say he's the truth. A lot of people say he a liar. I'm trying to see for myself, right? And the man pop up and say, oh, if the father do it, no, I'm going to mess around and do it too. Right? He's talking about father, God. Yeah, no, no God, the father. If he do it, you know, I'm, I'm going to do it too. What? Then the man come back and he say, what now? For as the father raises up the dead and quickeneth them, even as so. As the father raises up the dead and makes them alive, even so. Even so the son quickeneth whom he will. So you mean to tell me you put life in who you will? Okay, keep going. For the father judges no man, but has committed all judgment to the son. That got that. This is what lets you know. So you remember we talk about, we talk about, you know what I'm saying? Well, what happened was Yahushua died, and what did he do for all people? He bought them all. He, he bought them all, right. right? Well, what really happened here is he's explaining it right now. Because he earned that position by dying, although he was worthy of life, he took on the debt of the people, although he was worthy of life. His reward... Oh, we got grab. I don't even know where it is, but I know it's in there somewhere. It's Isaiah chapter 53. Let's just start at verse one. We're going to read. Let's just try to read through it quick. I know it's in there somewhere. It's Isaiah chapter 53. We're going we gonna to come back to John chapter five. What verse we leave off on? 22. All right. Verse 22. That's a, that's a legit crawl there. Everybody stop watching my baby crawl. Look at that. No, no, that's a legit. <laughs> My daddy baby there. That's the best one I got by far too. <laughs> they ain't even close. Oh, so you'll leave me alone about Azariah then? Hmm? So, so you'll leave me alone about Azariah then? What? You talking all that crap? Like, I ain't saying nothing. Like, all right, just make sure. That ain't me. You know what I'm talking about? You talking about somebody else. <laughs> I ain't never said nothing. I get it. You know what I'm about? If anybody get it, I get it. I got it before I had a daughter. Like, yeah, it makes sense. You know what I'm saying? It ain't make sense. Let that thing go. This is uh, uh, Isaiah chapter 53. Give me verse 1. Let's try to read through this. Who has believed our report? Uh-huh. And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Uh-huh. Arm of the Lord is Yahweh Shua. Keep going. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that Pay we Pay attention to what he's him. saying, though. He said, as a root out of dry ground. In other words, where he coming from, he ain't got no business coming from there. Yeah, hey, what he ain't got to. You understand? Like, where this, like, you wouldn't expect a plant to come from where he coming from. Right? Keep going. Watch this. When we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Okay. He is despised and rejected of men. Okay. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we, est we esteemed him not. Mm -hmm. Surely he has borne our griefs and mm -hmm. carried our sorrows. Mm -hmm. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Mm -hmm. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Okay. He was bruised for our iniquities. So he took on our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Okay. And with his stripes, we are healed. Okay, so we ended up being healed as a result of what he did. Okay, keep going. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone his own way. Mm -hmm. And Yahuwah has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Okay. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. Okay. He was taken from prison and from judgment. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? Okay. For he was cut off of the land of the living. Mm -hmm. For the transgressions of my people, he was stricken. Okay. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his uh, and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was there deceit in his mouth. Okay. And it pleased Yahuwah to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When you shall make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of Yahuwah shall prosper in his hand. Mm -hmm. He shall see the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. Mm -hmm. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him with a portion with the great. Well, he, therefore what? I will divide him a portion with the great. Uh -huh. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he has poured out his soul unto death. 
and he was numbered with the transgressors. Right? So look, look at what he said. As a result, as a result of his sacrifice, let's read it again. Therefore, I will do what? I will divide him a portion with the great. So therefore, I'm going to give him the portions of the great. He owns it. And then what is he going to do? And he, shall, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. So then I give it to him to choose who to give it to. He's going to divide the spoil with the strong. Right there, he's telling you this man is going to have the judgment. So now if we go back to John 5, that's what he's explaining. He's saying, listen, I can't do nothing unless the father do it. In fact, I do what the father do. For example, the father might decide to resurrect somebody. And like so, the son can do the same thing. Right? Then the man says, the father don't judge anybody. Just, just imagine listening to somebody say stuff like this while we're keeping our law the way we know to keep our law. This man sitting there saying, oh, no, the father ain't judging nobody. He's committed all judgment to the son. So you mean to tell me you saying that you're judging all people in the way that God does? I might just stone this man myself. That's how people got to be thinking this. Because it's like, what are you taught? This is very foreign to us. Watch this. Keep going. The man is telling you about resurrection and eternal judgment. Watch this. Because it's two pieces of it. That's why we want to tackle these together. Right? It's two pieces of it. You got resurrection and you got eternal judgment. Those are opposite sides of the same coin. Right? Watch this. For the father judges no man, but has committed all judgment unto the son. That's because he gave it to him. He gave, he gave him the, 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 spot, the, the, uh, the, the portion of the great. You know what I'm saying? And then he gave him the power to divide it with the strong. Right? Watch this. That all men should honor the son, even as they honor the father. Right? Go ahead. Watch, watch me say that. He that honored not the son honors not the father which has sent him. Right? So you can't honor the father if you don't honor the son. That got that. You can't have these people running around with, no, 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 the father, you know what I'm saying? The father is the father, you know what I'm saying? Jesus ain't real. Or Jesus was just a man. Or this, that, and other. That's not proper honor. You just call him just a man. That's crazy. You know, that ain't proper. The man sitting here telling you who he is. He said, no, I do what the father do. That's crazy. See here and look at him now. He's just a man. He was just a, he was just a prophet. You talking about he's just a prophet? Oh, that's not honor then. That's dishonor. You lowered him. Right? All right, keep going. Watch this. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that hears my word and believes on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, mm -hmm. but is passed from death unto life. This is him dividing it with the strong. He has the portions of the great, right? And now he has the power to divide it with the strong. So he's telling you what the strong is. He who does what? He that honor, hears my word and believes on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, mm -hmm. but is passed from death unto life. Mm -hmm. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the ver voice of the Son of God and they, shall he and they that hear shall live. Right? So the, the dead at some point, he said, it's coming and it's soon here that the dead going to hear the voice of God and they going to hear it and live. In other words, he talking about the resurrection. Right? So you remember what we read from, from Paul. He said, man, it's going to come a day where y'all sure are going to be coming in the clouds. And then what's going to happen? You do the trump of God. You're going to hear the trump of who? God. So the dead is going to hear what? The trump. No, right here. What do you say? Dead is going to hear what? Uh, well, the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they shall hear, and they that hear shall live. That boy voice going to sound like a trumpet. It's going to sound like a trumpet. And guess what's going to happen? Don't get their butts right up, just like he said. What y'all doing? We got work to do. Everybody just going to wake up. Ugh. You know, see people that got cremated in the darn ocean. Just stuff just going to start coming the darn together. Bringing it in, they're going to walk up out the water like, man, what's going on? Get caught up right in the air. You know what I'm saying? Where we at? Yes, right here? All right. You know what I'm saying? You wake up, you wake up, it's whoa. You know what I'm saying? You wake up, whoa. <laughs> oh, hey, what's going on? What y'all doing? Yes. 
Hey, man, you want that too? You know what I'm talking about? You never know. I had no idea you were going to make it here. You know what I'm must have changed after I died. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, look, you must have did some changes after I darn died. Been trying to tell you for years. Right? What's going on? Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. I like my orange pants. This is, uh, all right, keep going. What verse are we on? 26. 26, give me one, give me, uh, give me 26. For as the father has life in himself, so has he given the son to have life in himself. Mm -hmm. And has given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the son of man. Okay. <clears throat> Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. And shall come forth that they have done good into the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil to the res resurrection of damnation. That's it. So it's two resurrections, right? Hope we got, grab Revelations. You to help me out. 22. I didn't write this one down. It's not, it's not 22. It's got to be 19 or 20. Let's try 20 first. So this is Revelation chapter 20. Give me verse. Yeah, we can probably start at verse 1. Revelation chapter 20, verse 1. If that ain't it, then it's 19, verse 1. It's Revelation chapter 20, verse 1. Watch what the book say. And I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. Okay, watch this. He said, I saw an angel come down. He had a key to the bottomless pit and he had a big old chain in his hand. Let's see what he's talking about. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Okay. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more. Okay. Till the thousand years should be fulfilled. Okay. And after that, he must be loose for a little season. Okay. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. Okay. And so I judgment saw, given to thrones. People setting up. Okay, let's see. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahushua. Okay. And for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image. Okay. Neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with the Messiah a thousand years. Okay. Watch what he say next. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. So the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. Watch this. This is the first resurrection. Okay. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. What happened next? On such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of the Messiah and shall reign with him a thousand years. So he just told you about both of them. There's the first resurrection. And it's like, well, why you call it first resurrection if it ain't no second resurrection? No, oh, there is a second re re resurrection. It's just called the second death. Because there's one resurrection that's going to be life, period. But the next resurrection ain't life. The re next re re resurrection is you being brought back just to die again forever. That's why Yahushua said there's a resurrection onto life and a resurrection onto death. A lot of people don't understand that. This is Leviticus 18. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 1. It's Leviticus. Good job, Mel. It's Leviticus chapter 18, verse 1. You're going to start, you know what I'm saying? You do this enough, you have them thing down. I'm going to be whipping all through that thing. It's Leviticus chapter 18, verse 1. Watch the book say. And the Lord spake. Unto Moses, saying, Speaking to the children of Israel, and say unto them, I am Yahuwah your God. After the doings of the land of Egypt, where you dwelt, you shall not do. Mm -hmm. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, where I bring you, you shall not do. Mm -hmm. Neither shall you walk in their ordinances. Mm -hmm. You shall do my judgments and keep my ordinances to walk therein. Mm -hmm. I am Yahuwah your God. And what happened? Watch this. You shall therefore keep my statutes, my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. And if a man do, he shall live in them. I am Yahuwah. So now, when Yahushua is talking and saying the son has life in him, even as the father has life in him, this is what he's talking about. He's saying the father has said, if you do these things, you shall live in them. Just like those who are asleep in the Messiah. the Messiah rise again. 
those who keep the commandments will live in the Father. I in the Father I want. So that means you never die in the Father because you kept the Father's commandments. That's why Yahushua says, I can't do nothing unless the Father told me to do it. He's indicating that I'm doing exactly what Leviticus is telling me to do. Therefore, I live in the Father. So now, if you live in the Father, then I and the Father are one. Just as if we obey Yahushua, we are one. Does it all start to make sense? He's trying to lay it out for you, and he's doing it quite plainly. What happens is, these people tell a lie. They get in all the Easter, Christmas tradition, all this weird stuff that they be doing, talking about some darn Lent. What's wrong with these people? I just don't understand it. You got people walking around with darn black crosses on their darn forehead for six weeks. Six weeks? I don't know how long they do. I might be embellishing a little bit. But they be having the, the black thing on their forehead. I said, oh. Well, the first time I saw that, I was freaked out. I was in, I was in Red Robin. I, said, you know, I was eating with my family. I'm looking all around. I'm like, bro, is this foolishness? There's a lot of Gentiles. They had this. Yep. Yep. Right. Yep. You're right. And just make a fool. You can't find it one time in the book. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's some good stuff in the book, too. You ain't even got to do all that. But it's just like, you know what I'm saying? It's just like uh, the prophet told uh, Naaman. You know what I'm saying? You remember the prophet told Naaman, uh, Elisha told Naaman, he said, he told me, like, listen, man, if I told your butt to go do something crazy. That's name and servant said that. Huh? Name and servant. Oh, yeah, name and servant. That's what that name and servant is like, man, had, had, had Alicia told you to do something wild. You know what I'm talking about? If he told you to do some great thing, you'd have done it. All the man told you to do it, dip a couple times inside of the Jordan. You know what I'm saying? They was looking like, oh, okay. This guy, okay, you just making fun of me. And they was like, you just making fun. There's a great river up north. You know what I'm talking about? It's a night look, but you want me to go in the dirty, nasty Jordan and dip? You don't care nothing about my skin, boy. You know what I'm saying? You don't care nothing about my leverage. He like, man, had he told you to do some great thing, would you not have done it? If the man told you slap your knee seven times, spin around, and then do a backflip, land on your neck, name it would have did that thing so fast, hoping that his skin clear up. But he told him to do something simple. Just go dip in the Jordan. Like that nasty pool, all them Hebrews that be up in that thing. Boy, I ain't about to dip in no darn hell. Now you just, you want me to get leprosy. That's where all the lepers is. You know what I'm saying? You're like, you want me to get leprosy. Right? Was that the door? Yeah. I think so. Right? So he's looking at it like, man, I don't know, man. We got to figure that out. Right? Uh, Zahar, go on answer the door for me. But, uh, Oh, never mind. You ain't got to answer it. You good. What is it? It just, uh, it don't matter what it is. You ain't got to answer it. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's what, that's the mindset that we got to get out of. We got to get out of the mindset where we want something extraordinary. Sometimes you just got to do what the books say. And sometimes it's simple. Extraordinary thing going to happen when the most high God say it happened. You can't be sitting there demanding it, though. That was Amazon. It's, um, this, uh, Let's go back to John chapter uh, 5. I think we left off of what? 27? 29. 29? 29. It's John chapter 5, verse 29. What did the book say? And, sh and shall come forth that they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just mm -hmm. because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. Mm -hmm. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There you is good. That, oh. Grab um, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Let's do a little talking. Yeah, I remember when I first read that. And then Zechariah like, made so much sense. Yeah, that's the important thing about this book, man. It's like, it's not made to just read one book and then try to call yourself an expert. The way it's made is like, you got to know the scripture. You know what I'm saying? And then when Yahushua gets to talking, what he's doing is he's opening up that scripture that he's hoping that you're already familiar with. 
All right? You got to be a study. You, the most High God didn't put this word together for people to just be like, okay, it's there. You know what I'm saying? It's like you want to know about your God. Like you want to be in him. You know what I mean? So you got to kind of look at it and open it up and figure it out. Now, it's very, you know what I'm saying, in terms of history, it's very recent that we have all this access to just everybody got a book. We can open up our phone. We got the whole book on our phone. So it's like you have to know. We have to put this in perspective and just know that the most high God going to look at us like, man, you've had no excuses. Because in times of old, the times that we're reading about right now, you would have to get your butt up and you got to listen to the man of God preach it or to the, to the person who, 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 uh, who got the word to read the word. They would have to read this stuff in the open. You know what I'm saying? Once every seven years, the whole law get read. Right? That's how we had to get it. We just had to have our mom and dad tell it to us when we got up and when we went to sleep. And, 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 and they had to get it from going on the Sabbath and hearing the word there. And they get this little piece of the word and they kind of go through it and you got to keep that in memory. But I'm just hearing it. I can't go, I can't go back and reference it. I ain't got no book where I can just go. I ain't got no phone that I can just flip through. You know what I'm saying? It's very different. The most high God look at it, you know, you got your challenges there too. The most high God look at it now, well, you can get the book however you want. You search it on a computer, you can get the physical book, and you can go to any store and get the physical book, and you got it on your phone for free. So then he's going to look at you and say, okay, so you had no excuse. Whole book right there, you just didn't care. You just, I mean, you had, no, you had no reason to even look at it in your mind. Right? That's what we have to kind of have to get through our head. So the devil, the devil has to approach things differently. In times of old, he could just limit how much of the word that people hear because you know it's difficult to get to it. But then what it, then the most high God, you know what I'm saying, his spirit counteracted where you got a sense of community. Everybody doing the same thing. On the Sabbath, this is just what we do. Right? So you get it that way. Then that thing switched. He take us out of our line. You know what I'm saying? Our land. Community gone. But most high God say today, he said, okay, but the word today, I'll make sure you get the word. What happened? We got brought here in 1619 to slaves. What happened just a few years before that? English. King James Version. You ain't never seen you ain't never seen a book get mass produced by a king? How what's what a coinky dink? And if you look at our history, the kings always made decrees whenever the most high God wanted to do something for us. And if, re, if you read the preface to the King James book, the original one, and just listen to how the King James talking. That boy looked like, man, most high God put this thing on my heart. You know what I'm saying? Do this, get this thing out, get it to all the people. No, no, no. I'll foot the bill. You know what I'm talking about? Like, that's his mindset. And it just so happened right after that, we slaves in America? Hard. Come on. This ain't no kawinky dink. You know what I'm talking about? This ain't no kawinky dink. I don't care what y'all think about King James. I'm just telling you, this ain't no kawinky dink. Keep going, watch this. And no, I ain't saying because people have seen you get talking about King James. Hey, but it has errors just like anything. I'm not saying they ain't got no errors. I'll help you find the errors. I'll show you some of the errors. You know what I'm talking about? I ain't saying they ain't got no errors. I'm just telling you, this ain't no kawinky ding. Watch this. Second Corinthians, what? This is Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter 5. We're going to read the whole chapter. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Mm -hmm. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. Mm -hmm. If so be that being clothed with being clothed, we shall not be found naked. Mm -hmm. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon the morality might be swallowed up for life. The mm -hmm. mortality might be swallowed up for life. Now he that wrought us for the same self, for the self same thing is God, who also has given unto us the earnest of the spirit. Therefore, we when he say the always, earnest of the spirit, he's saying he gave us a little piece of it. All right. It's important to understand this. He's saying he gave us a little piece of the spirit because what people look at it be like, well, you know what I'm saying? God said he's going to pour his spirit on people and this, that, and the other, da, da, da. So this, a lot of people be like, man, the prophecy already fulfilled. Right? We in the new covenant. The new covenant already happened. Like, no, 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 no. What he's telling you is he gave you an earnest. 
when you bought your house? What did you have to put down? Earnest money deposit. What did that mean? You got to put down this money, saying, give me this money to, to basically seal the deal, saying, you take this money, like, I'll take this money from you so that I'll know you're, you're, serious, you're serious and you'll be back to finish out the process. That's exactly what it means. So what's the most high God do? Give y'all a little earnest a little money. Down you know what I'm saying? Give you a little earnest money deposit. Don't worry about it. Payment. Give you a little earnest spirit deposit. Don't worry about it. And we read about that last week, right? Because you had, you had all the disciples that came together on what day? Uh, uh, Feast of Weeks. On the Feast of Weeks. The book called it Pentecost, right? In the translation that we have, right? But on the Feast of Weeks, all the congregation came together. And amongst that congregation were the disciples that walked with Yahweh Shua and the apostles, right? The Spirit fell on them. People thought, folks thought they were drunk. Peter jumped up and told them what? These are men are not drunk. But this is happening just like the prophet said. I will pour out my spirit on your young men shall prophesy, prophesy. and some dream dreams. Those so, dream dreams, something like that. So we look at it and that happened. So we can take that and be like, oh, see, that fulfilled the prophecy. But then we come back here in Corinthians and he's telling us he gave us an earnest of the spirit. That's just a little deposit. I just gave you a little bit just to be like, okay, you know what I'm saying? Just let you know this is happening. I'm for real about this. Take me seriously. When we were talking about how these signs will follow those who believe. Talked about that last week. That's the earnest of the spirit. Just like, listen, this is a real thing that's happening. I want you to hear the little deposit. I want you to know I'm for real. The real thing, the, the finish, the, we got the down payment, the closing. The escrow. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, that's still coming. You know what I'm talking about? We got to close this thing. That's still coming. That's when it's really going to be some glitz in the glamour. That's going to be the resurrection. Watch this. Keep going. Therefore, we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. We walk by faith and not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the Lord, I mean absent from the body, and to be present with the Lord. All right. Don't they make a mess of this? Well, they will say that this means you die and go to heaven. Yeah. This is where they get it from. And you know what's so crazy about that? What is he actually saying? He said we would rather be with the Lord. Like, this is something that we wish to happen. But whole time, everything we just read, what is he talking about? So far, everything that we read, what is he, what is he describing? He's talking about how we are here in our earthly body. And eventually we will, you know, we want to be, we, we waiting for, we want to be, we're hoping for that new body. Resurrection. Whole thing is about resurrection. And what they're going to do is they take this line, they take words out of it, and make it seem like, you remember you used to have to do them, uh, them problems in English? You know what I'm saying? And it would be like, uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, a dog is to cat as a, you know what I'm saying? A dog is to cat as a mouse. You know what I'm saying? It's to cat. You know what I'm saying? Or something. I'm trying to think of a good one. You know what I'm saying? A dog is to cat as a snake is to rat. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like predator pray to predator pray. You know what I'm saying? It's like these are just factual things. So they try to make this sentence sound like that. To be, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Is that what they say though? Does it say to be absent from the body equals present with the Lord? Is that what it say? We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent Listen, from the body. I'm confident, and not only confident, but I'm willing to be absent from this body. So after I just got done telling you, we in this body, and man, we groaning and hoping to try to get something better. That's our hope. I want to get something better, right? Therefore, I'm confident in the Lord. In fact, I'm willing to be absent from this body that I'm currently in. And what? And to be present with the Lord. And to be present with the Lord, because that's the ultimate goal. 
when you're resurrected, okay, when we started out, we read, we read 1 Corinthians, or we read uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, we started at verse 13, and we talked about how the dead would rise when? The dead would rise first. The dead rise first. Where did they go after they rise? With the Messiah in the sky. They're present with the Lord. Right? So what he's saying is, we're in this body now. I'd much rather be absent from this body. In other words, this body no longer exists. That means I have a new body that I just got done talking to y'all about, telling you, hey, there's a new body coming. Right? I'd rather have that new body because in that new body, like we read in uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, we're going to resurrect and be present with the Lord. So he's saying, I would much rather be absent from this body and to be present with the Lord. He's not saying being absent from this body equals being present with the Lord. Keep going. I'm telling you, man, look, the devil can only do a few things. He can only do a few things. He can't do too much with the word. Only thing he can do is mess with your understanding of the word. You know what I'm talking about? He can't, the word is the word. He can't do too much with it. He, most like I ain't going to let him do too much. He did a little bit. You know what I'm saying? He got a little, little trickery in there. But most like God ain't going to let him do too much with the word. The word is the word now. Right? He tries. You know what I'm saying? He got all these different versions. You got the, the you know what I'm saying? Y'all seen the Sefer? Uh, Sefer? The Sefer? Sefer? No. Sefer, Sefer. You know what I'm saying? It's a version of the Bible they got out. Cypher, Sefer. They got that thing coming out. A lot of the Hebrews use it. You know what I'm saying? Because it's supposed to be like a more, a more Jewish-based translation into English and all that stuff. You look at some of that stuff and be like, mm. like they try. They try. It's still, but listen, the cold part is, word's still a word. You can give me the NIV version right now. I don't care what version of the Bible you give me. I will light your butt up with it. Because the word is still the word. Even if you try to translate this in a tricky way, I'm just going to take you somewhere else. I'm like, okay, we'll deal with that then. If that means that, deal with that one then. And I do it in your book. Because the word is still the word no matter what. Most I got, he made it so you can't do too much. with it. Got, I'm going to show you that the whole book got to be invalidated if you try to take it that way. And I don't care what version we use. I done did this with people like, man, okay, all right, for sure. That's what you think. No, see. You have to understand Jesus is not God. See, when it says this in, in the beginning, okay, all right, for sure. If that mean that, let's go look over here. What that mean then? How that makes sense then? Tell me that. They ain't changed that one, did they? They wasn't smart enough. They don't know the book well enough. People make a darn mess. Take your time to learn the book, and then you could try to lie on people. You know what I'm saying? That's my problem. They don't even lie good. Like we were talking about speaking in tongues. Like at least do... Like, trick is according to what the words They don't just do some wild stuff. What's wrong with y'all? I don't even put no effort into the lie. You know, you know what I'm saying? You a bad son of the devil. You know what I'm saying? The devil good at this thing. You know what I'm talking about? Goodness gracious. Keep going. Let's see what the book says. Wherefore, we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. Uh-huh. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of the Messiah. Got to be That judged. everyone may receive the things done in his, in his body according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. That's good and evil. Let's see. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God. Mm -hmm. And I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. Mm-hmm. For we command not our, we command not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to but give you occasion to glory on our behalf that you may have somewhat to answer them which glory in appearance and not in heart. Mm -hmm. For whether we be besides ourselves, it is to God. For in other whether words, we whether sober, we look crazy to y'all, it's because of God. You know what I'm saying? We doing it for God. You know what I'm saying? He's trying to tell you, listen, we're not commending ourselves. You remember, Paul, this is Paul writing, right? So you remember what did Paul have to go through? Remember, he had argued with folks, and where did he have to go? Who he remember go, where Paul had to go? He had to go to Jerusalem. He had to go to Jerusalem. And what happened when he got to Jerusalem? They hollered at uh, Peter, and Paul, Peter and John. They hollered at Peter and John, and what did, what did James say? They was like, all right, let's get to the conclusion of the matter, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. And what did he send them back with? He said, things that Paul says is legit. Mm -hmm. Just keep yourself from... Uh, Meat offered to uh, meat offered to uh, idols and fornication. And didn't he write a letter? Yeah. And he sent Paul back with the letter. Oh, yeah. 
Right? So Paul is telling them, do I need to commend myself to you again? In other words, do I need to go and get somebody approval again? To try to show, because I've done this already. I'm letting y'all know what I'm telling you is for real. I know y'all respect the boys. Good. I don't have a problem. Ain't a pride thing for me. I'll go get you know what I'm saying? But do I need to do this? Read it. Watch this. I appreciate Paul. Can he try to let them know? Wait, man, I ain't got time for this stuff. Watch this. For whether we be besides ourselves. No, back up. Oh. For we commend not ourselves. Uh-huh. For we commend not ourselves again unto you. Right? But give we you not doing this again? Watch it. Keep going. We'll give you occasion to glory on our behalf. Uh-huh. That you may have somewhat to answer them which glory in appearance and not in heart. Mm-hmm. For whether we be besides ourselves, it is to God. Or mm-hmm. whether we be sober, it is for your cause. Uh-huh. For the love of the, love of the Messiah constrains us, because we judge, we thus judge that if one died for all, then we are all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known the Messiah after the flesh, yet now henceforth we know we, we, henceforth know we him no more. All right? So you understand what he's saying? He's saying, listen, you have to understand that if you believe a man died, then when you die to your flesh, then you don't live for your flesh no more. He said, in the same way, we got folks who knew y'all was shooting after the flesh. How did we know y'all was shooting after the flesh? Man, walking around, we like, man, what is he talking about? We didn't really know. But when the man died and came back, that's when everybody's like, oh, that's the one. Right? So how do we know y'all was shooting now? Experience. After the flesh or when the man died and came back? He died and came back. We know him as, oh, no, that's the one. You know what I'm saying? We don't know him as... What is that man talking about? Is that really him? I'm not sure. I mean, he fed some people with fish and it came out of nowhere. They ain't, they ain't what we know about. We know him. Oh, no. That's the one. That's y'all. Shoot, that's the son. You know what I'm talking about? So he said, in the same way, we don't know nobody after the flesh. When I look at you, I'm looking at you either there or you're not. That's what he's thinking about. He said, I'm thinking ahead. I'm not thinking of this moment. Keep going. Watch this. How much more we got? A little bit. Let's go. Therefore, if any man be in the Messiah, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. All, and all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Yahushua, the Messiah, and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. That's right. To wit, that God was in the Messiah reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. That's right. Now then, we are ambassadors for the Messiah, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in the Messiah's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Mm-hmm. That's it. Uh, grab uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 real quick. Let's jump on down to verse 20. We ain't got to read all this one. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20. Watch the book say. Got a lot to cover still. But now is the Messiah risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. Look, he became what? The first fruits of them that slept. What day did he die on? Uh, Passover. What day did he rise? First fruits. First fruit sheep waving, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Amazing how this thing lined up. I don't know where we get Easter from. I don't know what's wrong with these people. Book is the book. Ain't never stopped being the book. And these people just make us this good book, too. That thing just gets under my skin. I'm sorry. Let's keep going. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Mm -hmm. For as in Adam all die, even so in the Messiah shall all be made alive. Mm -hmm. But every man in his own order. The Messiah, uh, Messiah the first fruits, afterward they that are the Messiahs at his coming. That's right. Then comes the end. At his what? At his coming. That's right. Then comes the end. Then comes the end. When he shall uh, have delivered up the kingdom to God. And he going to deliver the whole kingdom up to Yah. Watch this. When he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. Everything going to be put down under the man. For he he going to come back and conquer the place is what he's trying to tell you. The man going to come back. People going to resurrect. He going to have his whole team with him. He going to go through and conquer the place. Don't worry. We getting there. We going to talk about Revelation. 
He going to conquer the place. Everybody got to kneel to him. Everybody got to bow down to him. Everybody going to acknowledge that he's the man. All this time right now, it's like a guess. Like, oh, I don't know. Is Jesus real? Is it Muhammad's story that's real? I don't really know. Man going to be on front. He going to pop up. He going to slice some folks up. And he going to make believers out of everybody. Right? Everybody got to believe. Right? Once that happens, what's going to happen? For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. Uh-huh. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Okay. For he has put all things under his feet. But when he says all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is expected, mm -hmm. which did put all things under him. Mm-hmm. When so all when it say, he said it's accepted, it's, so in other words, the father who gave it to the son to put all things under him, he said it's manifest, it's obvious that the father is not going under the son. Right? So he's saying he's accepted. Right? He's an exception to that. Right? Watch this. Which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued under him, then shall the son also himself be subject to, unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. That God may be all in all. This is the plan. And we have to understand it. What verse is that? 29? 28. 29. Give me another one. Else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead if the dead rise not at all? Right. Why are they then baptized for the dead? Right. Don't make sense. And why stand we in jeopardy every hour? So you understand that baptism ties into what we're talking about. And we talked about it a little bit. But baptism is the symbolism, right? The physical symbolism of us dying and resurrecting. And then there will also be... Uh, actual baptism into the spirit, which is really the what? When we get baptized in the spirit, that's the resurrection. Right? All right, let's go. Let's grab uh, real quick. Grab uh, Ezekiel chapter 31, I think. Ezekiel chapter 31, verse 16. Valley of the Dry Bones. Is that what I'm looking for? I mean, is that it? It's not 31, not the Valley of the Drop Bone. But are you looking for the Valley of the Drop Bone? No, nah, not right now. Oh. It's uh, Ezekiel chapter 31, verse 16. I made the nations to shake at the sound of his fall when I cast him down to hell with them that descend into the pit and all the trees of Eden, the choice of the best of Lebanon and all that drink water shall be comforted in the nether parts of the earth. They also went down into hell with him unto them that be slain with the sword. They also went down where? To hell with him that shall be slain with the sword. And they that were his arm that dwelt under his shadow in the midst of heaven. Mm -hmm. To whom art thou thus like in glory and in greatness among the trees of Eden? Yet shall thou be brought down with the trees of Eden unto the nether parts of the earth. Thou shalt lie in the midst of the uncircumcised with them that be slain with the sword. Thou shalt lie Pharaoh. in the midst of those with the uncircumcised that be slain with the sword. Right? Grab uh, Ezekiel 32. Give me verse 31. Watch this. Pharaoh shall see them and shall be comfort, comforted all over all his multitude. Even Pharaoh and, his, uh, and all his army slain by the sword, said the Lord mm -hmm. God. For I have caused my terror in the land of the living, and he shall be laid in the midst of the uncircumcised with them laid that are slain. in the midst of the uncircumcised with them that are slain. With the sword, even Pharaoh and all his multitude, says the Lord God. Right? So the Most High God, at death, has made a separation of, of people. You can either be dead in the Messiah, or you laying in the midst of of the uncircumcised. That's where the judgment comes from. That's where the voice goes and the, those who lay in the midst of the uncircumcised, they're not going to hear that voice. Only his children going to hear the voice. Only his sheep going to hear the voice. When the sheep hear the voice, what they going to do? They obey. They're getting up. 
They getting their butt up. When the uncircumcised hear that voice, well, guess what? They ain't going to hear it. You know what I'm talking about? They ain't going to hear it. They'll be like, huh, I'm still asleep. Yeah, you know, you, know, you hit the alarm sometime. You get to snooze that thing. Just five more minutes. And what happened? How long you sleep? About an hour. By the way, you get to wake up an hour, darn later. Oh, rushing and stuff. That's going to be them. That got that. Oh, too late. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, you missed that bus. You know what I'm saying? That thing, too late. They ain't going to hear it. Right? Grab Daniel, chapter 12. Try to finish this up. I'm going to touch on a little bit more of this. It's Daniel chapter 12. Verse 1. Um, verse 1, yeah. It's Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. What did the book say? At that time, and at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which stands for the children of thy people. Okay. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. Oh, he's saying it's going to be real bad. Watch this. And at that time, your people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. All right. So everybody who's written in the book, book of life, they're going to be delivered. Watch this. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. All right. The ones that sleep in the dust, he say all of them. Many of them that sleep in the dust <laughs> of the earth shall awake. He said, a lot of them that sleep in the dust, they're going to mess around and wake up. Watch this. Some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Oh, that got that. That got that. Some of them is going to wake up to everlasting life. And some of them is going to wake up to everlasting contempt. This is exactly what Yahushua is talking about. The two resurrections. Right? You have to separate those who lie with the uncircumcised from those who are sleeping the Messiah. And that's what determines this resurrection. But keep going. Let's see what else Daniel got to say. And they, shall, and they that shall be wise... And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. Mm -hmm. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Mm -hmm. But you, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Mm -hmm. Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold. There Listen stood, to what he said. Many shall run to and fro. What to and fro mean? Over here, back and forth. Back and forth. People are going to be running back and forth. In other words, what, it, what, you, what, what picture you get if you got people running back and forth? Like, uh, not knowing where they're going. They don't know where they darn going. They darn confused. He says, many going to be running back and forth. And what's going to increase? The knowledge shall be increased. So I don't know. Maybe like if you want to know something, I don't know. You probably type it in on Google. You know what I'm talking about? You know what they say now? There's never been a time in the world where so much information was available at our fingertips. That's what people say all the time now. I don't know what that's talking about. And with all this information, what are people doing? Running to and fro. Running fro. back and darn forth. They don't know Everything what they down. are doing. Good. I don't know what this could be talking about. Keep going. Watch the book say. Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood other two. The one on this side of the bank of the river and the other on that side uh -oh. of the bank of the river. And what happened, Daniel? The one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? Oh, my goodness, how long? And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven. And what did he say? And swear by him that lives, for, lives forever, that it shall be for a time, times, and half a time. It's going to be a time. Time and a half. Times, right? So it's going to be... A time, one time? Time, times, and a half. Hold on. You got to slow down. So it's, it's going to be a time. Mm -hmm. Then after that, it's going to be times mm -hmm. with the S. Mm -hmm. And then what else? And a half. Oh, goodness gracious. We're going to do some talking. You know what I'm saying? And a half. Keep going. Watch this. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people. all When he shall accomplish to scatter 
the power of the holy people. What else? All these things shall be finished. Mm -mm -mm. And I heard, but understood not. He said, look, Daniel told you. I said, no, I heard. I heard everything that we said. No, I wrote it down. I heard everything that was said. I ain't got no idea what this man is talking about. Then said I, O oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? Mm -hmm. And he said, go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. Many Fast forward to Revelations. Who opened up the seal? Keep going, watch it. And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. Mm -hmm. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly. And none of these wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. That's right. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away in the abomination that makes desolate set up, mm -hmm. there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Mm -hmm. Blessed is he that waits and comes in a thousand three hundred and three hundred and five, three hundred and five and thirty days. Mm -hmm. But go thy way to the end, to the end be, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. That's a cold game. Cause none of that stuff had happened when he wrote this. You know what I'm saying? None of that stuff had happened. The abomination that makes desolate. That thing ain't happened before he wrote the this. The Greeks did that, dude. He letting them know. Uh, no, that's the uh, Romans. The Romans did that. Remember, because Yahushua said a lot of people thought the Greeks did it. Because in Maccabees, they wrote about it, and they said they, they tried to use all this stuff, and they tried to tie it. That's why I don't, I don't rock with Maccabees. Because then Yahushua came afterwards, and what he say? He is like, you when know what I'm saying? Abomination when you see the abomination that makes death. Yeah. So that means it can't just be that. It's either a double prophecy, you know what I'm saying, or it wasn't that at all. Right, and we have all indication to say we know exactly what it is. Is when the Romans came, yep. right? Uh, the Romans were the abomination. That, you know what I'm saying? They were they were the hateful thing that made de desolate. And why would they be considered hateful? And the Romans like, tore down our thing, they destroyed our land. And what they do after that? Burn the uh, burn the temple. What they do after that? Kill our people. people. What did they do after that? Most of God don't care nothing about that part, right? What they do after that? I ain't gonna say he don't care, but you know they scattered it. They scattered it. What they do after that? Then they uh, then they sacrificed like some messed up on the altar or something. Now nah, the Greeks, they might did it too, but uh, what I'm thinking of it's the Greeks. But what they do after that? They get us out of there. Our land is destroyed. What they do? Then they put a bunch of people in there. They put some people there. What else they do? Oh, you got me. What happened to Catholicism? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, of course. Who becomes the face of the Most High God? A Catholic priest. <laughs> That's an abomination that makes desolate. What them boys do? Yeah. Desolate is destroy, right? You know what I'm saying? That the, so it's the, it's the hateful thing that destroys. You know what I'm saying? What them boys do after the Catholicism? Didn't they run this thing? Yeah. I mean, you got crusades. You got all types of stuff in the name of God just getting laid over. They jumping into other people's land, shooting them, enslaving people in the name of God. Right? It's the hateful thing that destroys. Right? So that's why you tie it to the Romans, because you know what I'm saying, Yahushua, not because I tie it to the Romans, because Yahushua tied it to the Romans, based off of what we know from history. Right? <coughs> Let's grab one more before we get up out of here. This is uh, Ezekiel chapter 37. Give me verse 1, real quick. It's Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 1. Let's see what the book says. This is the valley of the drop off. Yeah, buddy. That ain't was deep. When I first read this, I was like, dang. That's a bad man. <laughs> That's <laughs> crazy. It's a bad man. <clears throat> the hand of the Lord was upon me <laughs> and carried me out in the spirit of Yahuwah and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. That's right. And caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. Mm -hmm. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? Mm -hmm. And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Mm -hmm. Again he said unto me, Prophesy unto these bones, and say unto them, O you dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. He said, O you dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God unto these bones. Okay. Be behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. Mm -hmm. And I will lay sinews upon you and bring you bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you. Uh -huh. And you shall live and you shall know that I am Yahuwah. Okay. So I prophesied and I was commanded and I and as I prophesied 
there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together. Bones what the hell? What, what happened? So, so look, he's a prophet. It's just a, a valley full of dead bones, just a whole bunch of dead bones. He, he prophesied, and all of a sudden, there was a noise. Mm -hmm. What was that noise? Oh, there's a trumpet. He said, there was a shaking. Right? So the noise, he, the noise was the bones starting to shake. He just, just imagine a whole valley full of bones, and all of a sudden, them things start, start shaking. He just, you know what I'm saying? You just hear, because the bones are trying to come together, like little roaches or something. You know what I'm saying? They're all trying to come together. Then what happened next? And the bones came together, bone to bone. All right, so now, bone to bone, clap. They ain't got nothing between them, just bone to bone. You know what happened if you walk around and your knee lose the cart cartilage that, mm -hmm. that's in between the bone? What happened? That's a whole condition, ain't it? Deteriorate. I forgot what it's called. But that ain't hurt. That ain't painful. You can't walk on that leg no more. That thing can't bone the bone. So what God got to do after that? But send you. Let's see. And when I beheld, lo, there were sinews and the flesh came upon them. Right? So then the sinews, that's the joints. He had to put that in between the bones. Then after that, the flesh started to come. You got the darn, the darn meat and the skin that had to come. Right? Watch this. And the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Mm -hmm. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say unto the wind, thus says Yahuwah God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. Mm -hmm. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Mm -hmm. Then he said unto me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off from our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus says Yahuwah God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. He said, I will open your graves and cause you to come out of your graves and I will bring you where? Into the land of Israel. Y'all better be ready. But we preach is resurrection. I don't preach nobody looking down on you. Ain't no hope in that. The hope that purifies us. We get one more and we get up out of here. It's 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. There's only one hope that can purify a man and a woman. Right? It's only one hope. The rest of this stuff that they shovel into us, all this somebody looking down on us and, and it's okay, you know what I'm saying? You die, it's better to be with the Lord and all this stuff. Listen, all this stuff that they be shoveling, you put your hope in this stuff and that stuff will send you to hell. There's no way for it to purify you. There's only one hope that'll purify. It's 1 first, first John chapter uh, 3, verse 1. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knows us not because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when, we, when he shall appear, we shall be like him, mm -hmm. for we shall see him as he is. And every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. That got that. That got that. That's what we talk about with resurrection and eternal judgment. You either resurrect it and you live forever, or you go to hell. Eternal contempt, burn forever. Right? We're going to talk a little bit more about the burn forever when we get into Revelations. But that's the basics. Right? Over the last few weeks, the things that we went over are the basics. This is what you need to understand the word. If you are unskilled in these basics, if you don't understand these basics, then you're unskilled in the word of truth, period. You ain't got no reason teaching nobody. And you know what I'm saying? I hope, I hope a pastor just happens to click on it or something. Because let me tell you, you ain't got no reason teaching anybody anything about the book as a leader. You just got to sit your butt down and learn. Don't have no pride. Don't feel like you can't do it. Don't feel like you can't turn around and admit it to people. Just sit your butt down. You'd be better off for it. You may not be the man. You may not be able to lead a church. right? You may not be able to get all the money. But at the very least, you can save your soul. You can save perhaps a lot of other people's souls too. Because the book already told you, and Daniel, he told you, it's going to be something that's going to help a lot of people in the righteousness. And they're going to do what? What they going to look like? How they going to shine? They going to shine bright. They going like to shine the stars bright. The they shine bright. What do you think going to happen if you lead people into unrighteousness? Your butt going to hell. All right, that's it. Any questions? Let's pray out. Yes. You got a question?
What kind of question you got? I thought you said you had a question. 